Hey everyone, Fitter Party. Um, today we're going to be going over the fact that I think the market as a whole, when it comes to trading cards as collectibles, whether you're talking about you know Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, sports, whatever, um, I really think that there's going to be a lot of movement in the next few weeks in particular. And I think, for the most part, that's going to be upwards pressure put on prices due to demand and people having more money. So I want to cap this off by saying this is just my personal opinion. Um, don't go out and spend your life savings on dumping in cardboard. Don't take out a third, fourth, fifth mortgage on your house like some idiots like to tell you. Uh, not a financial advisor, don't know what the hell I'm at, probably shouldn't be listening to me, but anyways. In my opinion, with Pokemon especially, I think over the next two to four weeks, we're going to see a giant jump in price. Now, for all my Yu-Gi-Oh people out there who want to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh, we'll get to that in a second, because I can already hear Araki calling me a simp in the background under his breath. Um... What I think is going to happen in Pokemon specifically is that it's going to slingshot back up to the prices it was before Christmas and before, you know, the Logan Paul hype died down and everything cratered. Um, and it might even go past some of those all record highs. Um, the super high end stuff, you know, like your Charizards and your Illustrators and all that, that stuff didn't retrace. For the most part, it went up. Um, you got stuff like the Gold Star Rayquaza went up. You know, all these super high-end, big-ticket items, a lot of that stuff didn't really go down. You know, Trophy Kangaskhan's, all your trophy cards, fun stuff like that. Um, but when you're talking about your penny stocks, quote-unquote, like your unlimited base set PSA 9, 7 hollows, um, all that went to shit. That was, you know, almost preordained to take the nosedive that it did. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, because you haven't been around very long, usually the market takes a giant shit right before Christmas. So usually around Black Friday is when it comes ahead and everything starts cratering. Um, this year happened a few weeks early, but or last year I should say, sorry. Uh, happened a few weeks early, but... Nonetheless, the timing was pretty well spot on what I had predicted. Um, I was selling certain cards for all-time record highs. And I'll give you an example. I sold a PSA 9 first edition Venusaur for just over $12,000. Uh, that was the end of October, I think it was. It might have been the first week in November, I can't remember. Um, the end of December, I was buying them back at like between $4,000 and $4,500 all day long. Um, so almost a third of the price of what I sold it at the highs when I sold. So when I tell you that this is what I think is going to happen in the market, this is where I'm putting my own money. I'm putting my own money where my mouth is. Um, I've already dumped a bunch of extra money into specific stuff that I'm going to get into. So, like I said, though, this is just my personal opinion. You can take my advice for what it's worth. Um, some of you listen to me. That's great. Some of you laugh at me. Whatever floats your boat, I don't really give a shit. Um, so, number one thing. Um, sports cards have gone absolutely batshit insane. Um, you're talking your Michael Jordans, your... LeBron James's pretty well anything basketball has gone nuts hockey's gone through the roof you've got your baseball you know you had the Mickey Mantle nine go for five over five million dollars a couple weeks ago um, all these cards are setting new record highs and it's not even like they're beating out the old record from you know a year or two ago by 10 20 15 you know 50 or even a hundred percent from a year or two ago it's You've got your Michael Jordan Fleer rookie card selling for, you know, a quarter million, three hundred thousand dollars, and a month later it's selling for like fucking three quarters of a million. Like that's absurd. Um, 
there was a LeBron James refractor that was in a Becca 10, not even a PSA 10, sold for $100,000 at the end of December on PWCC, and a 9 sold as of the filming of this video last night for $130,000. So you're not even talking like a 30% gain on the same card in a month, which in itself would be astronomical. You're talking about a Becca 10 selling for 100 and then a PSA 9 selling for 130 a month later. Um, all the sports card stuff is absolutely on freaking fire right now. So keep that as a preface to what I'm going to get into. Um, a lot of the sports card stuff cooled off a month, two months before all the Pokemon stuff did, because sports had a giant influx of, you know, new collectors, new investors, and money getting pumped into the hobby all spring, all summer, just like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, whatever your poison is, did over the summer and into the fall. Uh, and they've had a giant resurgence with all these brand new record setting prices in the last few months. So keep that in the back of your head because generally when you're talking about collectibles, especially cardboard collectibles, there can be patterns drawn from other hobbies. That's how I, you know, figured out what to do with a lot of my portions or uh, a lot of my positions, sorry. And a lot of these cards with Yu-Gi-Oh! was looking at what was going on in Pokemon, you know, a year, two, three years beforehand, and extrapolating data from that. So, I see the sports card trend upticking, and we'll get into why in a minute, a lot. It had nosedived a month or two before Pokemon nosedived, so I think the upward trajectory, you know, not even looking at anything else we're going to get into would make sense if Pokemon would jump up to, you know, a month or two later. Uh, number two, you've got the 25th anniversary of Pokemon coming up. Um, the big announcement's going to be in like two, three weeks now. I think that's going to add a lot of hype to, you know, something that's already Hype Master 4000. So... You know, if you get your Neo Genesis set reprint like a lot of people are thinking, or your Fossil Jungle reprint or anything like that, anything like that you're just going to see a giant upsurge of interest of, you know, especially if it's Neo Genesis stuff. You're going to see this giant resurgence of people a lot of the same way that when, you know, Evolutions came on stream for the 20th anniversary. You're going to see all these slightly younger people than the people that grew up with red and blue come back into the hobby for gold and silver stuff. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of hype thrown at Pokemon in the next few weeks. I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on the pricing of a lot of this stuff. It's going to push it up. So number three, a lot of people were talking about, oh, you know, everyone's submitting millions and millions of cards into PSA and, you know, as soon as all these cards come back, you know, you're going to be selling your fucking what? Like base set nine Charizard for a loaf of bread at the store because that's it's going to be worthless, you know. There's going to be millions of Charizards everywhere raining down from the skies or some bullshit like a Egyptian plague wished upon by the pharaoh. Um, that's not happening. PSA has been at capacity for years and it's just getting worse. The last time I was informed on it, PSA had a 7 million card backlog. So for reference, when they got shut down due to COVID, it was like a 2 million card backlog. So not only do they have 5 more million, with an M, card backlog thrown on top of what they already had, they're still taking submissions and more shit is still getting thrown in the pile. So what's happening now is they're at 85% of their capaci capacity, sorry, with just their express orders. So they're not even getting any of that bulk shit you've been sending for your fucking dog chewed, you know, uh, what's that shit? I don't know, Merrill or something. Someone's going to yell at me in the comments for bad-mouthing Merrill, but whatever. Like, 
all of these people sending in all these cards is keeping the cards from being graded. So whether you're in Pokemon, Sports, Yu-Gi-Oh, whatever, you're all trying to get your cards graded by PSA and Beckett, and they're all backlogged to hell and back. It's not getting better anytime soon, even with, you know, CGC doing their thing over in the corner of the closet underneath the stairs, like the redheaded stepchild they are for a lot of people. But, like, just the way it is. Like, cards are not coming out any faster. They're coming out slower. And the only thing, for the most part, people are sending Express is your high-valued items, which aren't really going down. So all these shitty, you know, like, quote-unquote shitty, sorry. 50, 100, even two or $300 cards aren't getting graded like everyone is expecting they'd be graded by now. So you really need to keep that in the context because I've got my own personal cards I sent back in January or February of 2020 before the pandemic even started. And I still don't have those fucking things back. Like, if you're thinking that all these people who caught on to the hype, you know, post-COVID lockdown are getting all these cards back and it's going to flood the market. It's not going to happen anytime soon. I'm sorry to tell you. Uh, PSA is just that backlogged. They don't have enough staff. They are getting too many submissions. They physically can't get through the cards. Which brings me on to my next point, which is a meme in itself. But you have all the Wall Street bets people who just made shitloads and shitloads and shitloads of money off of GameStop and AMC and whatever else they're getting into. They just made billions and billions of dollars. It's probably the greatest redistributed redistributing of wealth we've seen in, you know, decades. <laughs> to be perfectly frank. So you have all these, you know, quote unquote retail investors or sellers, whatever you want to call them, they're just normal people who suddenly have you know, maybe not millions, a lot of them got tens of thousands, even a few thousand or a few hundred. Still extra money they didn't have before. They're pumping into stuff they couldn't afford before. So if you had your uh, favorite Pokemon being Blastoise growing up, you could never afford a first edition Blastoise. If you just made $50,000 off of fucking GameStop, you're going to drop, you know, whatever you got to drop to buy a PSA 8 or PSA 9 Blastoise because you just want the card. You don't give a shit. You just made $50,000 on GameStop. Like, who gives a shit if you use, you know, 5 10% of that to buy a card you've always wanted since you were a kid? And a lot of that's being reflective in the prices the last few days. I've been seeing PSA 9s and Beckett 9s outselling Beckett 9.5s like consistently on a bunch of shit the last few days. It doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't make sense because you have all these new investors and collectors coming in with all this stupid, stupid money. And they're literally just click buy it now, or they're just bidding some absurd amount on a card just because they want the card that they're seeing first when they look in the search engine on eBay. Like it's actually insane. Um, I, I cannot stress how much stupid money is getting pumped into various collectibles right now and will be pumped into collectibles in the next couple of weeks as more people get their money clearing, you know, cash out from GameStop before it crashes and burns. But you have no idea. Like, Wall Street lost $70 billion with a B. Even if 1% of that gets reinvested into all collectibles as a whole... That's still $700 million. $700 million. Say it again with me. $700 million. That's 1%. Like, it's stupid. Uh, on top of that, now, apparently, we've got Logan Paul hyping up Pokemon again. He's doing more Pokemon videos. That was before I was even planning on doing my video. So that's just going to add more rocket fuel to the fire to be hyping everything up. Now, the thing where it comes in with Yu-Gi-Oh, a lot of you guys might be wondering what the hell I'm even talking about. 
And, you know, I do do sports and Pokemon besides, so throw shade, downvote, whatever the hell you want to do. But the thing it is, with Yu-Gi-Oh!, because all of you cheap bastards are too cheap to pay your eBay fees, a lot of your quote-unquote record-breaking deals behind the scenes on Instagram would probably go for a hell of a lot more if they saw the light of day on eBay. Like, look at some of the shit that's been auctioned off the last few days. We got unlimited blue eyes hitting four or $5,000. That card should not be that high, but if there's a lack of supply on the market and there's no, you know, progressive sales, you know, setting the stepping stones for the step behind it and everything else, you're not going to have that normal progression that you'd see in the market where it goes up, you know, 5, 10, 20%, bit by bit by bit. It's a card doesn't come up for six months or a year and people panic by and are like, oh shit, I haven't seen this in a year. I got to buy this now or else I'm never going to get this card again. And it causes people to panic and up bid and everything goes to hell. So that's where it comes in Yu-Gi-Oh where you might not think the prices of cards are going up but it's because there hasn't been a lot of them posted because no one wants to sell anything on eBay because they're too cheap to pay your 9%. And you're literally slitting your throat to save 9% and throwing away a pile of extra money you could be making. So I'll leave that there. Uh, I've beat that with a dead horse multiple times on this channel. But I'd just like to say it again for all the new people. Um, and lastly, you've got, again... All these people who are getting money from all these smaller sales, like we said before, as people are buying up smaller stuff, you've got your um, stimulus checks coming out in the next couple weeks for my American friends. You know, that $1,400 not, might not sound like a lot of money, but if you have a few people throwing, you know, $100, $200 of their stimulus check into the market, that creates as you know, the Wall Street bets people proved a lot of money cumulatively. So if you've got, you know, even a million people throwing in a hundred bucks each, that's a hundred million dollars. Even if you only have a hundred thousand people doing it, still a million dollars. A million dollars can do a lot when you're talking about, you know, hundred, two hundred dollar cards. And as your you know, more established people in the communities are selling off these cheaper cards again. They're going to have more capital freed up and they're going to be making bigger plays on their bigger items, which is going to drive the bigger prices up too. So it all comes full circle like it did before, which leads me back to believe that within the next month, I think everything that happened last year, you're going to be looking at rose tinted glasses and be like, oh shit, I wish I bought my Cyberstein at $10,000. You know, I'm an idiot. Why the hell did I buy that then? You know, you're going to be looking at your Charizard going for $350,000 in a PSA 10 and being like, oh shit, I remember when that sold for that price. It's one bajillion dollars now. Like, it's, there's no rhyme or reason to what's going to happen, in my opinion. So, you've all been forewarned. Um... If you want to buy anything, it's always the best to buy now, especially usually this time of year, because prices are usually lower, traditionally, after Christmas. That's not happening, for the most part, especially in Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon are already tanked, so you can't get blood out of a turnip, unfortunately. So, if you have anything to buy, buy it now, because it's probably going to go up, and in my opinion, it's going to go up by a shitload. So take it for what it's worth. Hope you like my TED Talk and learned something today. And have a good one.